Hello and good day to everyone around the world, wherever you're listening from. This is Dr. Eileen Hale, the COO of our organization, Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. Today I have a wonderful colleague, special guest with us today, Eva Grizel. Welcome, Eva. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Such a pleasure to have you join us. Although Eva and I actually live close to each other here in Jacksonville, Florida, we are on Zoom as usual. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to share a quick introduction. Eva is a nationally recognized master storyteller. She teaches through interactive storytelling techniques, which I'm really excited myself to learn more about. She has performed internationally. And today she's going to share, she's worked for over 25 years with teachers across the United States. And today she's going to share our, her techniques with our global listeners, as well as offer an upcoming workshop. So with no further ado, I'm going to have Eva take over the microphone. Thank you. I mean, you know, I think one of the questions a lot of people ask me is, how did you become a professional storyteller? That was my first question. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I... I was pursuing a career as an actress in New York after I graduated college, thinking if I'm ever going to become an actress, this is the time. And while I did that, I needed a job. And I lived in Pennsylvania, where students had to learn about William Penn. So I developed a program on William Penn, and I started performing around at the various schools. And what I learned is that while teaching this historical event, I was able to use storytelling techniques to spontaneously involve students from the audience. So I made William Penn's story, which was historical, come to life. That's so amazing. today in this workshop, or we're gonna do a summary really of the workshop that I'm giving in September for you, I'm gonna talk about some of the techniques I use, I've developed to help students use their imaginations to feel passionate about the subjects they're learning, to retain the information. I mean, how often, Eileen, have you been teaching students and next week they don't remember what you taught? Doesn't right. that really frustrate you? It's like we just did that last week. And the reason they forget is because they felt nothing. And this is what storytelling does. When you use storytelling to teach, they feel something. And when they feel something, it triggers that retention that helps them remember that message, that word you're teaching in that other language, whatever it is you're teaching. And that's so important. I love your passion about this topic. That's so important for English language learners around the world, how to retain the vocabulary, even the grammar structure, the syntax, the idioms, idiomatic expressions that you use in storytelling. So can you share a little bit about the relevance to storytelling, particularly for English language learners, as well as the age groups, how you do this with different age groups? Well, First, let me go into the technique. Yeah, wonderful. So that you can understand what I'm going to be teaching you on September 18th. The technique is instead of asking children to read, well, you know, read a paragraph, then you read a paragraph. It is so boring. Yes. <laughs> Better, you know, and then I tried this in the classroom. This is exactly what I tried to engage my students. At first, I tried having them read and it was terribly boring. Then I tried reading, sometimes in different accents, to be funny, like the old lady, or I'd play characters. It still wasn't that engaging. And then one day, I actually asked the student to play the part. So I gave the dialogue directly to the student by telling the story to the audience. In other words, I said, or to the class, I said, Mr. Green asked Mrs. Cheap Heap for his money. Now, I didn't say, go, go ask for your money, Mr. Green. I don't talk to the kid who's gonna role play the part. I point and I say, 
Mr. Green asked Mrs. Cheap Peep for his money. So I never stopped telling the story because as soon as I speak to an individual student, I lose the rest of the group. So then Mr. Green might say, yo lady, I want my money. <laughs> or Mr. Green might say, I want my money. Really boring. And then you, as the narrator, could say, Mr. Green asked with, with, you know, and you could teach a word here. Let's say it teach a word in, in the language you teach. He asked in a very strong voice or in a very loud voice. He said, give me my money, however you want to do it. And the kid will either repeat verbatim exactly how you did it, or they might put themselves in the story and actually come to life. And then all the kids start laughing, they get into it, and they're not laughing at the kid, they're laughing with the kid. Right. It, it boosts self-esteem. It really improves retention of the story because these kids are remembering, this is fun. And yeah. when they have fun, they remember. Exactly. So it's such a powerful way to teach another language. That's wonderful. And so you, you can know. just, you can sort of speak the sentence in the native language of your students, but then use one word that's in the language you're teaching and go from there. Keep repeating that one word. So as I, so um, you'll see my tips for this technique, but basically the most important thing is to come up with a goal. What do you want these kids to know after you tell this story? Do you want them to learn these 10 words? Do you want them to learn social skills or cultural, cultural accepted behaviors? Like what is it do you want these students to take away? Yeah, and I was just thinking, sorry, if I can jump oh. in, just for our listeners, I was just thinking along the teaching English lines. So on with Eva's example, you could focus on, say you want the, the kids or students to know, can I please have some, my money or may I? So you can focus on those grammatical structures, just asking for something that you can use anywhere you go. Can I have some rice, can that's I have a, some eggs? That but is a great have. example. That's a great example of how to do it in the story. So for example, let's go back to Mr. Green and Mr. Mrs. Cheapy. Right. Mr. Green says, yo, I want my money. Mrs. Cheapy says, I will not give you money unless you ask me properly. And right. Mr. Green, so you can do the different ways that you can say that sentence incorrectly. And Mrs. Cheapy could cross her arms and say, try again. And then finally you get it right. And Mrs. Cheapy says, okay, now that you've got the syntax correct, I will give you your money. So you can adapt the dialogue to teach the subject you want to teach. Exactly. And I was also, my you know, brain is going to thinking of tenses in English, like you can do the imperative, the command form is give me my money versus a request, you know, of can I have, may I have, please, and the properly, like you're teaching the vocabulary. Right. So just yeah. like that, if Mr. Green says, give me my money, Mrs. Cheap Peep says, are you commanding me? Right. And then Mr. Green says, may I have my money or can I have, you know, so you can really teach this whole concept in the context of a story. Yeah, and then you could also extrapolate, right, in pairs and small groups with the kids or students saying, now ask for five other things. Take five vocabulary items in the room. Can I have a glass of water? Can I have my cell phone? Can I have my watch or give me my phone? Right. Give, and know? they'll do this really quickly if you say, yeah. so we can get on with the story because they all want to know what's going to happen in the story. So it's a great motivator to keep things moving in your classroom instead of you know here we go again the same old same old right right one of the other things I like to do in the classroom is enhance my stories with very simple props and costumes so you can bring eyeglasses where you pop out the lenses or you can bring a scarf or a, a tie or a 
seriously, a piece of cloth could become yeah. a baby. It could become the wind. It could become an old lady. So one little piece of cloth can play a lot of parts in your story. And kids have this opportunity to be creative with it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So keep us on this journey of this story. So once you set the goal of what they want to know, let's just say in this context, the imperative or asking politely, that kind of thing, then where do you go with the story? How do so, you? So the idea is that you have an idea of the story you're telling and either you're reading it or you know it. Now, if you know it, you just keep creating dialogue. That is really important because when you create the dialogue, you can then involve your students to say the dialogue. Now, remember, the technique is to not speak to the kids role playing the part, but to continue telling the story to the whole group. Do you have the story pre-written, so to speak? In, like, well, I, on September 18th, I'm going to give you an example where I'm going to read a story. Okay. And the idea is that I don't show students illustrations because I want them to create the illustration right there in the classroom. That's beautiful. Can you give an example of that? Like what kind of illustration? Like well, for example, to... if you're reading a story about Mr. Green and Mrs. Cheapy, let's say, and you see an old tattered man asking for money from a big rich person or a king or a queen, you can you can work with that. Let's say you have a bully in the class. Or let's say you have a really shy, quiet kid in the class. You're able to use characters to help them develop, you know, themselves as people as well. And I think that as teachers, yeah. students rely on us for that as well, to build them up, to make them better people. Definitely. And we can do that in a story. Well, there's a lot you can do in a story. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So getting back to that technique is yeah. number one, if you're reading a story, read the sentence and then put it in your own words. And when you put it in your own words, you want to enhance the drama. So if the book says a sad man, you might say a sad man who drags his feet, who frowns, who you, you need to add a little, you need to exaggerate so that you're giving your student something to work with. Now, your student may know how to be sad, you know, because if you're working, you asked about age groups. If you're working with older kids, they will know how to act sad. But with younger kids, you may want to elaborate a little bit about what that looks like. Or if it says a beautiful woman, you might add a woman who strokes her long hair, who walks with a swagger, who, you know, you want to create an image. Because obviously beauty is different to different people. Maybe the beauty for this character is really inside and how she smiles at everybody and anybody. There are so many teaching opportunities when you use a story. So the idea is that you, the teacher, you are going to shine. Everything that you believe in, your values, your skills, as a person, as a human being, which makes you a good teacher, is actually going to come out when you give this technique a try in your classroom, in addition to teaching whatever you need to teach. Yeah, I love that aspect of your storytelling. Can you elaborate just a minute on that point of how does a teacher who is a good musician or has a nice voice or whatever their skill is outside the classroom, how they integrate that into storytelling? Well, like if you're a singer, one of the things I like to do is add song to a story. For example, if there's a, a children's song like um, London Bridge is falling down, like just let's say there's a story about a bridge and yeah. you sing that little ditty or, you know, whatever language you're speaking, there are little familiar and, and age group. 
right? Yep. We're talking age group too. So if you're working with older kids, you may want to think about some of the, you know, more popular tunes that are out there that you may know of. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the great things about this technique is you do not have to be the all creative one. When I first start teaching this, teachers are like, oh my God, I can't do this. It's just, you have to be too creative. I'm not that creative. But I'm suggesting all you have to do is put it out there to your students. Who's got a popular song about a bridge or about, or about you know, whatever it is you're teaching? Yeah, yeah. And I am telling you, the kids are going to come up with the song. And then they're all going to say, yeah, yeah. Or what about this one? What about that one? And suddenly, you do not need to be the all creative one. You're kind of like setting the stage and letting. Right. Them and then the you say, take that song, take one of these songs that were just mentioned, and how about write a sentence in the language? You know, there are just so many ways to get the kids to be creative. And once you spark that imagination, these students are engaged. They are ready to learn. They are primed to learn what's coming next because now there's music they care about. There's a story that's interesting and they're learning the language you're trying to teach them. Exactly, that's beautiful. Do you use the stories that are already in the curriculum that people have to teach from even the textbooks and or do you bring in supplementary stories? Well, those textbook stories can be rather dull sometimes. It's yeah. really important. I mean, you know, when you read a, a language story, mm -hmm. you know, at the very beginning, my name is so-and-so, she oh, goes oh. to the store. Yeah. Take that and develop it into a little story. You know, use your own stories. Think about when you went to a store and something happened, something that scared you, something that was beautiful that you remember, something that made an impression on you. I believe that when teachers share their personal stories, mm -hmm. that is a very powerful way to teach because students get to know you a little bit. They get to know what's important to you, what impacted you. And they feel more comfortable because they know you on some level in a personal way that it opens up their ability to talk to you if right. maybe they're having a problem yeah. or they're feeling really defeated in some way. So I would encourage all teachers to open up a little bit, share a story about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I totally Kids agree. love that. And if you're a parent, start at home. Share little stories about yourself with your children and notice the impact it has. The impact is so much more profound than when you read a, a good night bedtime book to them. That's true. They'll remember that forever. You know, stories you tell with your grandchildren or grandparents That's, tell to their yes. grandchildren. Yeah, those are the ones they remember. I 100% agree. And on that note too, I think allowing students within your class to share their stories, whether in pairs or small groups, is an incredibly powerful way. We're talking about bringing down the affective filter so students feel really safe in your classroom and you're building that sense of community. When I had this experience with um, some of my students here in Florida, I was allowing them to tell, they were adults, and tell their stories of how they came to America as immigrants to this country. Really powerful stories. And when you open that door for them to share stories in your classroom, it really brings another level of community to your classroom. And then they're more engaged in wanting to learn exactly what you're saying. And, they, and it builds their self-esteem and they want to talk in English and share their story on a very personal level. So, so as so a storyteller, as a professional storyteller, when somebody tells their immigrant story, for example, it's really important to, and I think a great lesson in language is to teach feelings. Yeah. If you could have, and maybe in the workshop, I will provide a list of feelings. Yeah, that's perfect. Because you know, even as human beings, we have a hard time articulating our feelings. Yeah. So yeah. certainly to develop relationships with other people in another language, knowing the words for feelings are really important. But also, it 
as you were saying, Eileen, it develops relationships between each other. Exactly. And empathy, and then they support each other's learning in, within your classroom. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, so anytime you can get students to talk about a challenge or how it made them feel, and then talk about how you have felt the same way, struggling with something similar. Exactly. That's when relationships are built. That's when we start to care about each other. And that's when real learning can take place too. Yes. Right? yes. It's not about the curriculum per se, but it's about learning together and with one another, supporting each other's learning. So great thank goal. You. I'm going to kind of circle back any like specific uh, more techniques you want to add, because I know we've kind of elaborated on these techniques. You mentioned having a goal, the focus of what you want to teach, um, keep creating dialogue within your story. Um, anything else you want to elaborate and we'll right. creating dialogue is one thing. And then the second thing is to add action words. OK, that's key. You know, so. Uh, an angry man who stamped his feet, who raised his voice, who to add actions so that the students have something to go with. Yes. I even like to involve the whole audience. Let's say I have two students playing parts. I like to involve the audience as, or the rest of the classroom as yeah. the townspeople, as the birds and the bees, as the wind. So there are so many ways to involve everybody with a little interaction to keep them engaged. That's great, and, I love that. And we talked about props, simple props. Right. Um, I'd like to conclude with teachers who wanna videotape any part of the learning yeah. could then make a little video at the end of the year of the fun moments and the laughing moment, learning moments they've all had together. Also, if teachers write down some of the really great moments in their classroom, they can put them in the newsletter that goes out to people or to the yeah, national organization. So there are really exciting ways to promote the interesting ways that you yourself as a teacher have really you know, raised the bar on educating students through language. That's wonderful. Um, two quick questions on that note. Do you also integrate at some level, like say you have the students having the dialogue about give me my money and that's the focus of it. Do you allow for the students, the rest of the class um, to interact by asking questions? Why did she owe you money? Or why is he asking for money? That kind of like- That's interact. brilliant. Well, that's the beauty of this technique that you as the narrator can keep interspersing those goals that you have for teaching what you're teaching through the story. Okay, so the importance is knowing your objectives in the beginning and making sure you incorporate those throughout. So you, maybe it's asking the why questions. Yes. And that is part of and your- then, Right, so let's say the why questions was your goal for this story. Constantly keep doing that, yes. That's and um, I think it's a really nice opportunity also to teach values, yeah. right? Just social skills and values. In right. this country, we don't, you know, we, with our fingers, we burp after a meal, <laughs> whatever it may be. Or we don't make comments about people's headdresses or we, or we can, it's okay to ask questions about this or that. I mean, you might wanna teach through the story. So in other words, you're not telling a kid, don't do that in this country. Right. You're right. saying, you're teaching it in the story. In right. fact, the character could even say, you know, you better be careful about saying that in, you know, in, in the neighborhood. Right. But right. so it's coming from one character to another character. It's not coming from you to a student. Yeah, That's yeah, incredibly. That's great. And my last question um, is about writing. Do you incorporate writing into the storytelling? Do you have the kids or- well, just... So depending on the age group, yeah. okay? Uh, one of the things that I love to do is have, divide the students into groups and give them each a section of the story. Okay. And then to have them put it all together 
That's really fun. A short, so that takes work for the teacher. And I'm yeah. all about minimizing the work for the teacher because you teachers have enough work preparing for your lessons. Yeah. But if you can actually divide that story into four sections, divide your group, your class into four, uh -huh. and then have each of them tell a piece of the story, that's really fun. Or even in a rhyme for the older kids, get them to do it in a little rap, the story in a rap but only give them a short section of the story. Uh, for younger kids, I love to have them draw a picture about the story. Yeah. And it's interesting to see which part of the story they draw because they may draw about when, when the one character was angry at the other character. They may draw about when the person died. And then you may say, you know, why did you draw this picture? Is there something going on in your life that you could share you know, that I could help you with. So, so drawing is a great way for the younger children. There's so many activities. I mean, I love students keeping some kind of journal about one thing they learned that they liked, because you know, when they go home, the first thing somebody's going to ask them is, what did you learn in class today? Right. <laughs> and this way, they've written it down. They know something fun to share. Yeah, yeah. Show a picture to your mom and if they or dad. don't know, keep teaching till they've got it. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm excited to have you join us for a live workshop. Let's uh, do a quick summary, if you will, for our listeners. You've talked, we've talked again today with Eva about interactive storytelling, how it enhances learning, boosts retention, and builds our self-esteem in our classroom with our students. Um, your final tips, Eva, can you just summarize? Well, actually, the can you go back one yeah. slide there? I was going to add build self-esteem. What does that mean? That yeah. means that not every student is a straight A student. And from using this storytelling technique, students will discover that they may not be great at test taking, but they are great at at let's say putting things in their own words. I mean, that's a skill. They may yeah. be great at repeating something they've been taught. Right. So there are ways to be very smart without being a great test taker. And that's what this technique really helps teachers to identify in their students and help build on that. That's super important. Thank you for sharing that because, you know, if you have the self-esteem, then you're going to want to keep learning and have that confidence to excel in not only yes. language, but every subject matter. And it'll help them figure out what path they want to take in their lives because yeah. they'll know what their skills are. But I mean, one of the reasons I think so many students flounder in general is because they're never told what other people see in them that's special. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very true. That could be part of the storytelling. Yes. <laughs> Finding out what are those to see in them. Right, exactly. So in other words, you as a teacher could be saying, you are exceptional at doing this particular skill. And even my straight A students don't do it as well as you do. Amen. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, to highlight the, everybody's individual skills and have each other highlight those for one another in the classroom. So thank you. Let's summarize the tips. Um, one, you said choose three things you want listeners to learn and remember. Anything you want to add to that? That's pretty self-explanatory. Nope. I like being really concise here. I don't want to waste your time. So let's keep going. Exaggerate the drama using action words. And the action words help create the illustration in the minds of your students. It engages them. I mean, it's this imagination that's really dying among students today. So anything we can do to stimulate the imagination will just only take them, uh, will help them in the, whatever career they choose. And lastly, role play. And the beauty of role playing is you can teach without telling a student what to do or what to think. You're having the character teach it. It's brilliant, actually. <laughs> it's true. Yes, it's excellent. 
And I was just going to add um, when you the tip number two, exaggerating drama using action words, that is part of our teacher training is total physical response. The majority of us are familiar with that concept, uh, educational method. And you can incorporate this not only in storytelling, but I'm thinking also of when we're, many of us are still going to be online this fall, unfortunately. So, you know, keep, get the kids out of their chairs, even though they have, they have to turn on their computers and they have to act something out for you. Right. Make them engage at a different level. Everyone's always asking, how do I engage my kids on the computer? I I'd, like to, I'd like to add to that. I mean, notice in our conversation today, whenever I used my hands, yeah. whenever I leaned in, when I move around in my little shape here, yeah. it is definitely more engaging than sitting here nodding or reading my notes or whatever. Right. So when, when, I, when I say exaggerate drama, as a narrator, as the teacher, when you use your hands, when you move around in your seat, it really inspires, you know, so if you say, for example, an excited person, you could actually be doing it at the same time, giving students the idea of what they could do. And then everybody's doing this and it's hilarious. Right. And you could ask students to bring props and show their props so that they have to engage at a different level online. If they have to bring a scarf or if they have to act like an old lady or whatever it's going to be or an old man, they have to have the props to show the character. That would be so on screen, if you're on video and you could ask students to come up with a gesture yeah. that that speaks to the feeling or the drama or the action of that moment. And then everybody has to do that gesture. So whether it's like this, or it's this, or, you know, you know, or this, you know, whatever it is, it's really fun to get everybody involved using gestures. It's, it's very important when you're on a screen. Yeah, and you can also teach cultural things, what gestures to do and not to do in other cultures because those can often be misinterpreted. So that's very that's important. brilliant. <laughs> okay, thank you, Eva. I want to invite our listeners to join Eva. You can tell she's a very dynamic, interactive storyteller. She's going to share a live workshop with us on Saturday, September 18th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We'd love you to join us. You can tell she's going to go a lot more in depth with her techniques and give us the hands-on tools so we as teachers can practice the storytelling. Yeah, and inside. if you want to connect with me or you have any questions about this, go to my website, evagrazel.com. Connect with me on Instagram, at evagrazel, and or Facebook, and let's let's talk. Let's come up yes. with ideas. In fact, if you have suggestions or requests for the workshop about something to learn relating to storytelling, let me know in advance and I'll make sure to address it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Eva. It's been a pleasure having you with us today. You got me excited about this technique as well. <laughs> also, at the end of this month, we have our Saturday TTELT -T talks at the end of every month. It'll be September 25th. Again, we're offering two times to capture our listeners around the globe, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This again is a time where we talk about topics that matter most to you. As September is our storytelling month, if you want to focus on storytelling for this talk as well, we'd love you to join us. And again, email us ahead of time with questions, comments, at tteltinfo at gmail.com. Thank you for participating. Follow us with all of our links here and join, register for Eva's dynamic workshop at tteltorg will be the registration link for her upcoming workshop. Thanks so much for joining us, Eva. It's been a pleasure having you today. Thanks, bye everybody. Bye. Happy storytelling. Mm -hmm.